Epilogue So you and Katie, Brant asked as he checked his hook over. For some reason, the bait kept slipping on it today. Yup. Jackson smiled in satisfaction as he cast his line into the water. You do realize that your life is going to be one disaster after another with her. Brant's tone was mild. As long as it's with her, Jackson readily agreed. He looked at the peacefulness of the water and the woods. There were no city sounds here. No bossy agents. No deadlines or worries. Just nature and man. He loved this place. How's the business? Custom orders are picking up, responded Brant. There was a note of pride in his voice as launching into the online market had been his idea. Without the debt and interest payments, we finally are functional. I drew my first salary in ten years. Some days I still have to pinch myself. Jackson was glad Hawkins Fine Furniture Company was doing better. What are you going to blow all that money you're making on? I tried to give half of it to Mom and Dad to do repairs on the farm. They refused it. Brant had a bemused expression on his face. I'm not sure. I'm so used to doing without for so long, I just don't know. It's sitting in the bank. I tried to tell Sarah that I shouldn't be getting a salary until we managed to pay her boyfriend Jake back. However, we both know I'll never be able to manage that within my lifetime. Jake just told me that he had enough money and viewed it as an investment. You are in a new position, Jackson said softly. He wondered if he should mention that maybe now Brandt could see a more stable financial future for himself, if he was interested in finally resolving things with Melody. You can save for a future, have some goals. I suppose so. I'm just not sure what those goals should be. Brandt looked off into the trees clenching his jaw. Jackson had an idea what his friend might be thinking. Obviously, this wasn't a good time to bring up Melody yet. He hoped that eventually the stubborn pair would realize that they belonged together. There was a crashing in the woods. Both men turned to look as someone stumbled out of the trail onto the bank of the pond. The man bent over at the waist, grabbing his knees, and gasped for air. Is that Dixby? wondered Jackson with some concern. I hope whatever bear is chasing him gets him. Brant muttered and returned his attention to fishing. Hey! Dixby stumbled over to them. Help! Jackson reeled in his line as he waded back to the bank. What's going on, Cooley? Dixby was panting hard and holding a stitch in his side. He pointed back up the path. Melody, at the house, you have to help! What about Melody? growled Brant, keeping his back to Dixby. The question had been involuntary. He told himself firmly that he didn't care. Because he didn't. He didn't care how his heart jumped every single time he saw her in tight-fitting jeans, peasant blouses, and her beautiful shining hair. How he dreamed of her at night. The fact that he wanted to yell and shake her in anger over her defection to Dixby even though Brant could never offer her forever. He couldn't even offer her today. All the feelings of hurt, anger, and longing that Melody evoked were best ignored and forgotten. No, he didn't care one bit. He told himself that lie once again. Trouble. Dixby began a coughing fit that shook his entire frame. You're the firefighters. Do something. Realizing that Dixby wasn't kidding around, an alarmed Jackson tossed his fishing gear on the grass. Is she at your house? Dixby nodded frantically. He pointed up the path. Go already! Brant swore a blue streak and tossed his own rod on the grass. Shedding his hip waders, he pulled on a pair of hiking boots, not bothering with the laces. What happened? Is she hurt? Jackson continued to question Dixby. He needed to know what they were dealing with. Have you called 911? Dixby coughed some more, bending at the waist. And trying to draw air, he was unable to answer questions. Was it a fire? Jackson was concerned over Dixby's coughing. He looked up to say something to Brandt, but his friend was gone. 
already running up the trail which would lead to the Dixby's farm, intent on helping Melody. Worry started to eat at Jackson. Is he gone? Dixby straightened up, looking back where Brant had been. In shock, Jackson stared at the man who had made a miraculous recovery. Dixby ran a hand over his face and through his hair. He inhaled a big breath of fresh air. Woo-wee! That was a run! Grabbing Dixby by the collar, Jackson hauled him close so that they were face to face. Tell me what this is about right now. What is it always about? Melody and Brant, explained Dixby, tired from the running and from dealing with the fallout of his two best friends. Is there anything actually wrong with Melody? Jackson demanded. Was there any sort of emergency, or did you just fabricate this for fun? You bet there's an emergency, Dixby said in disgust. If you think I run for fun, you're out of your mind. What is really going on? A growling Jackson asked. He was through playing games and wanted answers. She's at my house, Dixby said, as if that explained everything. At Jackson's disbelieving look, he elaborated further. She has boxes. A lot of boxes. She's decided that since we've been engaged for five months and her lease is up, it's high time she moves in. Melody's moving in with you, Jackson repeated woodenly. He let go of Dixby and wondered how Brant was going to cope with this. It was not good news. Can't you see how much of an emergency this is? Dixby threw up his hands and his voice rose. He began pacing the grassy area. Your fiancé wants to move in, and that constitutes an emergency, Jackson said bitingly. He held Dixby and Melody to blame for their current situation. They had taken things too far, and it looked like neither of them would back down. I don't follow. She wants to set a date, Dixby hissed in aggravation, using hand motions to accent his distress. A date for a wedding! That's generally how engagements work, Cooley. Jackson drawled with a liberal amount of sarcasm. Maybe you should have thought of that before you offered for the girl? Melody knew this wasn't for real, exploded Dixby. He ran a hand through his hair again. She knew I only did it to try to goad the too proud and stubborn Brant to offer for her. Except it backfired, spectacularly. The entire town knows the engagement is a sham. Brant has to know it's a sham, yet will he do anything? No! Why would she suddenly get it in her head to move in with me? It doesn't make any sense. She has to know I'm not marrying her. I have tried to talk her out of this engagement so many times I can't count. She has become as bad as Brant. Jackson watched Dixby flop onto his back in the grass, putting his hands over his face with a groan. He didn't feel much pity for the fellow. Dixby deserved whatever was coming to him in Jackson's opinion. Why on earth would you make us think that something had happened to Melody? Why would you get Brant to go over there? I was hoping that if they talked, they might finally straighten some things out. Dixby sighed forlornly. He could only hope that the plan he had concocted would work. It had to work. Otherwise, otherwise, he might find himself leg-shackled on the first day of June at the pretty flowering arboretum in the park with his daughter Joy as a flower girl. Melody had a scrapbook full of ideas. A scrapbook. He'll probably just get mad at you, Jackson commented dryly. Now that he knew Melody wasn't in any danger, he was not about to go to the Cooley farmhouse to see the fireworks between Melody and Brant. No, he knew better than to get involved. As long as they're mad at me together, came Dixby's exhausted reply. They can hate me for the rest of their lives, as long as they do it together. Coming soon, Book Two of the Farm Country Series. Missing Melody. Brant Hawkins has been practicing a life of self-denial. 
He has been working so hard to keep things together at home and at his family's bankrupt factory that he just hasn't bothered with romance. Besides, the only one he's ever wanted was Melody Jesno, and he just can't afford a wife when his entire salary for the past ten-plus years went into his family's debt repayments. Melody is tired of waiting for Brant. She loves him with all her heart, and she knows she will never really be over him, but he's just plain bullheaded about the whole thing. It's not like she doesn't have a job. She could support them both, and their love would see them through the rest of the way, but Brant's precious pride is apparently more important to him than she is. Melody has decided to make her fake engagement with friend Dixby real. Her lease is up, and she's moving in with plans of a wedding. She's going to forget Brant, even if it tears her heart in two. It's a good thing Dixby is a coolie. Coolies always interfere, and never give up until they get the desired results. And Dixby is determined to get his friends Melody and Brant together. With the help of his little girl Joy, the couple are in for a night to remember. <laughs>